Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back. I'm Boomy, and today we are watching the four animal combat styles by Tier Zoo. Yes, this one was suggested by Sammy DeVito6900 over here. And yeah, obviously it's uh, earth, fire, water, and air. And uh, no, that's that's the different bending styles. Um, what I'm guessing it's gonna be like what? Uh, let's see, flight. What's more common? Um, poison. Oh, no. Um, biting or slashing, and then probably tool usage because uh, I'm thinking about us humans. Yeah, that's my best guess. In all honesty, I don't know what I'll be heading into right now, but that's the exciting part of it, right? So yeah, let's go ahead and check it out. So remember, if you like my reactions, don't forget to leave a like. Let me know your thoughts on the video down in the comment section below and consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to leave your suggestions on what I should check on next. That being said, let's go ahead and watch the video. This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. Are you having trouble choosing your character for your next playthrough of Outside? I don't blame you considering there's literally millions upon millions to choose from. So in this video, instead of showcasing a specific class and all the permutations like I usually do, I'm going to talk about the different playstyles available in the game. That way you can gauge your interest and see which style you think seems like the most fun to you, and use that to make a decision about which character to main. This video is going to be specifically right. about fighting styles. This is less important for support, builder, use social, and tank mains. But for the solo players out there, it's super important to understand how your build works and what to expect when you encounter another player using a build you're unfamiliar with. Okay, that explanation alone uh, probably means I'm wrong on all my predictions way back in the intro. So all that shit's out of the window. <laughs> Let's hear what he has to say. Anyways, when deciding how you want your character to function in battle, Okay, so we got spacing, grappling, rush down, and projectile. So, very far from what I said. Shit. <laughs> you need to consider the four basic fighting styles. Those are grappler, rush down, spacing, and projectile. The grappler build's goal is to prevent their opponent from attacking or escaping while reducing mm -hmm. their HP to zero. Now, crocodiles. This is accomplished by using a grab move. Some grab moves deal damage on yep. their own. But another common use is to use the grab to combo into a high damage move that otherwise might be difficult to land. There are many moves which can function as grabs, but perhaps the most popular way to go about building a grappler character is to invest heavily into raptorial upgrades to your character's arms or legs. Mm -hmm. A few other unique examples do exist. It's possible to also perform a grab using the move coil or even a tether grab. Oftentimes, significant investment into stealth is also necessary in order to create opportunities oh, for your character so to fast. grab range. <laughs> Advantages of a class like this include being extremely dominant against players who've chosen lower weight classes. The chance of an opponent breaking free from a grab scales directly with their size relative to yours. The main disadvantage of this build type is that if your opponent does break free or dodge the grapple attempt, a lot of times they'll be in prime position to Damn, it. son! Examples of the grappler build include mantises, frogs, chameleons, spiders, and snakes. But in my opinion, the top tier grapplers are the eagles, crocodiles, and cephalopods. Ooh, what Every the? Every style of fighter top tier grapplers are the eagles, crocodile. Why? Why would you do this? Does the croc not have any teeth in the front, or was this just a stupid move? And cephalopods. Okay, it looks like Every it was just a stupid fighter has move. Their weaknesses, and grapplers tend to struggle against projectile-based builds, and also get hard countered by perks like spikes and slime. These next two build types, Rushdown and Spacer, are very similar in that both focus on landing individual strikes on their opponent rather than grabbing them. Rushdown builds focus on getting in close on their targets and dishing out as many hits as they can. Mm. Typically, one individual strike from a Rushdown build isn't all Ooh. that strong. But several within a short time frame can bring down even the highest HP target. Yeah, so these are like your um, uh, agility builds. Strike quick, strike fast, and hope for crits. Oftentimes, rushdown builds will employ team strategies, multiplying the number of hits even further, while minimizing the risk towards one individual player. Because risk is a big part of the rushdown game. When you're in your opponent's face like that, they have ample opportunity to counterattack, even if mm -hmm. your hits are landing. 
so you need to really overwhelm them to avoid taking too much damage yourself. Generally, instead of focusing on power, mobility is the most important stat for rushdowns. Yep. The advantages of this class include being able to bring down higher HP targets, as well as generally being able to outspeed and escape from opponents that are too tough for you to bring down quickly. Examples include bears, piranhas. <laughs> Oh man, the way that seal just <laughs> went up and just started wiggling. Speed and escape from opponents that are too tough to bring down quickly. Oh Examples man. Examples include oh, bears, oh. piranhas, <laughs> and baboons. While top tiers for this category include oh. African wild dogs and falcons. Ooh. But I thought you just said birds of prey were grapplers. No, I said eagles are grapplers. Eagles deal their damage with their talons, while the typical mm -hmm. attack strategy employed by falcons is to knock their opponent out with a swift yep. punch and then finish them with their sharper beaks. Stun. <laughs> See, it pays to understand fighting types, because it can be tough to differentiate between similar looking classes. True. Rushdown characters struggle against armored targets the most, because armor can often completely negate the damage from weaker attacks. They tend to also have bad matchups against spacing-based characters, for reasons I'll discuss in a minute. Spacing-based characters try to deal damage to their opponent while remaining out of reach. This is typically accomplished by making use of attacks that have disjointed hitboxes, allowing them to strike or pressure an enemy without risking an immediate counterattack. There are many attributes you can choose from in order to give your character access to moves like this. Some examples would be horns, long claws, armored limbs, and tail weapons. Unlike rushdown builds, spacer builds tend to focus on landing only one or two individual attacks as opposed to a flurry of blows. That's usually all that's needed though, as their individual attacks tend yeah. to be extremely devastating when they actually connect. Either they're very high damage, or they can stun you, or uh, they can... how do you call this? Uh, proc the bleed effect. With that said, whiffing an attack like this can leave the user extremely vulnerable once an enemy gets closer than your attack's effective range. Yep. Sometimes it's best simply to threaten your opponent with an attack, and just whittle away at their resolve rather than actually attempt an attack. This strategy is extremely effective against rushdown builds because many of them simply cannot risk taking such a severe hit. Even entire teams of rushdown players can sometimes be too intimidated to make an aggressive play. Examples of spacing-based characters include the Gemspock, Narwhal, and Thresher Shark. While top tiers yep. include the Thresher Shark, damn, that's stun. Builds like the Swordfish, Secretary Bird, and Elk. Spacing builds have been declining lately, possibly because rushdown builds, which are normally very bad against spacers, are adapting, learning to bait out laggy moves and punishing them. You'll notice that builds from legacy versions of the game tended to favor spacing a lot more. Stegosaurus, Ankylosaurus, and Therizinosaurus all were extremely successful spacing builds back in the Mesozoic expansion, being excellent at rebelling attacks of rushdown therapy classes. Perhaps the most successful spacer of all time was Ooh. Triceratops, and it's pretty easy to tell which builds of present day took inspiration from them. Yep, I mean, when you're basically a walking, running tank and has a horn, you're gonna be pretty effective. Builds which use tail weapons used to be fairly common, but have almost completely fallen off the meta recently. The most recent one being the Glyptodont of the Ice Age. Spacing builds also tend to have poor matchups against grapplers, because typically, once caught in a grab, it's impossible for them to swing their heavy equipment. True. Overall, these are some of my personal favorite builds, and I hope to see some advancement in their metagame soon. The last category of character is projectile based. Projectile characters tend to require a ton of investment into a single technique that will hopefully be useful enough to make them viable fighters. The investment into projectiles is costly and difficult to use, but when used the right way they can be extremely difficult to play against. The most common form of projectile is a spray. Using the move spray combined with an acid, blue, or smelly <laughs> substance can result in a projectile that deals heavy damage, inflicts a poison status effect, reduces mobility, or even just destroys resolve. The other option is slinging a projectile. Oh, this requires much less investment from an evolutionary standpoint, but also requires that the user stockpiles items from the environment that can be thrown, Oof. making this move much harder to pull off in a pinch. These but now though, we do have automatic projectiles. <laughs> oh man, king of the food pyramid baby. Projectiles tend to be more purely damage focused. Although in some cases they can also be aimed at reducing the target's mobility. Now, with that said, oftentimes the immediate damage of a projectile is rather weak. So unless you're comboing it into a stronger <laughs> finishing move, it may not be the greatest use in a close quarters duel. Examples include the archer fish, velvet worm, bombardier beetle. That was a worm? I thought that was a spider. And horn. Examples include the archer fish, velvet. Shit! Yeah, that that is more like a slug. Worm, bombardier beetle, and horn toad. While high tier examples include the spinning Ugh. cobra, tarantula, and skunk. 
Projectile characters are really great at dealing with grapplers, since they can just unload on them as they attempt to find a grab. But projectile users tend to struggle against rushdowns, which can usually dish out enough damage in such a short time that the effects of their projectile doesn't really stop them in time to save them. Of course, yeah. these categories are by no means hard boundaries. Plenty of builds can hybridize between the two. Scorpions are a mix between grappler because of their claws mm -hmm. and spacing because of their long-reaching tail barb. Antlions use projectiles in order to knock their targets into their traps, but switch to grappler once in range. Bucks would normally be considered spacing, but can also switch to full-out rushdown mode in an instant if the situation calls for it. But I don't know why that was so funny to me. <laughs> oh man. Non-standard fighting. But hey, I hope this guide was useful for those of you who are undecided about who to main in this game. Learning about complex topics by breaking them down into more manageable pieces is a great way to build a foundation of knowledge for yourself. Here we go, the segue. Yep. Brilliant.org uses <laughs> when designing their educational courses too. I'm a huge fan of how they teach and have learned a lot from them. If you want, you can try their classes for free at brilliant.org slash tierzoo. By using that link, you can learn anything from quantum physics to game theory, and you'll be supporting my work in the process. Game theory. percent on the annual. All right, here we go, guys. I'm pretty sure this the link is still uh, valid, so go ahead and support Tierzu by going to brilliant.org slash Tierzu. Um, I don't know if you're gonna get the twenty percent of the annual subscription, but if you ever you wanna get brilliant, use the link on screen here. And yeah, very interesting video as. Per usual by Tier Zoo. Man, it totally went way out of what I was expecting. Humans were probably a good mix of all fighting styles, right? That's what makes us the top animal right now. I say right now because uh, there's a lot of factors that can <laughs> that can flip that over. Very interesting video. Um, yeah, aside from us. Who else has like better combos? Uh, let's see. Obviously, most of the primates have almost the same skill set as us. So, but then again, they are not the uh, how do you call this aggressive type. They don't necessarily go and hunt down other animals for survival. So, yeah, that that is what makes it. Uh, very interesting because as he said there's kind of like a rock paper scissors going on with the different styles and at the moment it looks like spacing is really going out of style uh they should probably switch to what that deer did and just start punching <laughs> but yeah that was a good video that's gonna be it for me today guys link to my twitter is down in the description below go ahead and check it out if you want to and if you're new here and enjoyed the video don't forget to leave a like let me know your thoughts on the video down in the comment section below and consider subscribing. Also, don't forget to leave your suggestions on what you should check on next. That being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!